Welcome back to CBS Sports HQ presented by Enterprise. Right now you're taking a look at the uh, top edge rushers in this draft. According to CBS Sports, we have the full ranks right now over on CBSSports.com. Number one on that list out of Alabama, Dallas Turner. Number three on the list, Jared Verse out of FSU. Now Dallas Turner joined our crew in Indy at the Combine on set. Take a listen. In the fall, that we talked to Will Anderson Jr., um, and he couldn't quit talking about both of you guys, about how good uh, good you were. I'm going to tell you a story, and given the cold shoulder you gave Rick here, I'm not sure how you're going to take it, but just understand, <laughs> Will said this, not me. And I asked Will, I said, what's the best thing about Dallas Turner? He said, let me start, let me start with this. When Dallas showed up Tuscaloosa, he was fat. <laughs> And he, he said he was fast. He was a fast, fat guy, but he was fat. Now he's great. He actually he went on to say you were better over the course of your career than he thought he was at Alabama. I just want you to know that the next time you talk to Will, he led with when he showed up at Tuscaloosa, he was chubby. He couldn't believe how fast you ran when you guys would run sprints. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> he could say that. But, you know, when I first came in, you know, that was uh, after the pandemic. Right. So, you know, I was in the house <laughs> eating a whole bunch of junk food and snacks and stuff like that. So, like, you know, I kind of came in with a little pot belly, you know, a little chubby face and a little wide neck. But, you know, over the course of my time, you know, my freshman year, you know, I kind of, he said I lost the baby fat. Right. So, you know, right. I, yeah, I, I kind of lost it. And, you know, but I was always athletic. Though. I was always fast. He said so. that. He admitted that he couldn't believe how fast you were and how athletic you were. He, yeah. he took for granted. He just looked at you and he, and he, did, he judged the book by the cover. Yeah, he can't judge the book by his cover. All right, I think we can all relate to being at home during COVID. <laughs> Eating Eat good. Snacks, Lige. <laughs> all right, so where does Dallas Turner fall in Ryan's latest mock draft? Right now, Ryan has him going number eight overall to the Atlanta Falcons. As for Jared Verse, he has the uh, Denver Broncos beefing up their pass rush by taking Verse 12th overall. You can find Ryan's latest mock right now on CBSSports.com. We have 10-year D lineman in the NFL, Lige Duzable, here with us to discuss these gentlemen. Um, a great interview there, kind of made me chuckle was, with uh, some shots from Will <laughs> Anderson. But speaking of Will Anderson, him and Dallas Turner, if you're looking at the SEC ranks, they're like one and two over the last, you know, all-time few seasons. Um, if you had to give a pro comp for Dallas Turner at this point, Ooh. what comes to mind for you? Chandler Jones comes to mind to me for, for me because when you look at Dallas Turner's game, six foot four uses that frame really well, long arms, right? And that's how it starts, Jacqueline, with his pass rush. That long arm. He gets offensive tackles off balance and finishes at the quarterback. And then you talk about him in the run game, right? Destroys tight ends. Jacqueline, you'll see on film where this guy will actually line up late because teams are going hurry up offense and literally knock the tight end two to three yards in the backfield. You see it multiple times. Now I would like for him to be a little bit more aggressive playing the run against offensive tackles and setting aggressive uh, hard vertical edges but when you put him over a tight end he destroys them he has the athletic ability to drop in coverage so that's why I think he could play in a 3-4 or be a 4-3 defensive end but of all these guys on this list coming out in this draft I mean his ceiling might be the highest because he is still so young he hasn't really moved into his body I know he kind of kidded earlier when he said you know during the combine I was eating all type of junk food but you heard Will Anderson say it right even though he was a little bit more chubbier he was still right there with the rest of the defensive ends running. That shows you the athletic ability that he has. So for Dallas Turner, my pro comp for him is Chandler Jones. Jo Chandler Jones had a great career in the NFL using that long arm, and that's what Dallas Turner does. And if you look at Ryan's latest mock, he does have him going eight overall to the Falcons. How do you like that fit? How do you think he would transition into that system there in Atlanta? Well, they definitely need some edge help on the outside there. They've really struggled getting after the quarterback. Now, the thing is, with the Falcons, they're also looking for a quarterback. Yeah. So how aggressive will they be in the draft or via trade in the offseason? Or do they get a guy like Russell Wilson who could potentially be a free agent if he's released from the Denver Broncos? So Dallas Turner makes a lot of sense to the Atlanta Falcons. Because Raheem Morris, know his background, defensive-minded coach. The Atlanta Falcons defense was pretty good last year, but they struggled in, in regards to getting after the quarterback. So Dallas Turner at eight makes a lot of sense for the Atlanta Falcons, especially if they're able to handle those questions about the quarterback position via trade or maybe uh, via free agency. I think Dallas Turner makes a lot of sense at eight. So we know, of course, the Falcons need a quarterback. You alluded to the Broncos as well with the whole Russ Wilson situation. If the Broncos don't go that rookie quarterback, 
quarterback route, and it does play out how Ryan Wilson has it taking Jared Verse with that 12th overall pick. How do you like that fit with him there in Denver? They're another team that needs some edge work as well as far as having a player that can consistently get to the quarterback. And when you talk about Jared Verse, Jacqueline, it all starts with power, speed to power. I mean, you turn on the film, and I know you're going to hate hearing this, Jacqueline, versus Florida. He literally put the <laughs> offensive tackle on the quarterback to get a sack. Now, the thing that I really love about Jared Verse, and you see it right there, right? The Ooh. stab and the slap, he's worked on his game, where last year he was probably going to be a first-round pick if he came out. It was all speed to power. You've seen him really develop and hone in on his craft, right? You see other pass rush moves. You see the stab slap off of his speed to power. He's really grown in that aspect. And then he's one of the hardest workers on the field. You'll see him chase quarterbacks down 30 yards. I was just watching the Duke film yesterday, and Riley Leonard is a running quarterback. He literally chased him 20, 30 yards down the field and caught him. And then there was a swing pass to a running back, Jacqueline. He was on the right hash. The running back caught it on outside of the left numbers. He hawked him down 30 yards down the field. So this is a guy that plays with elite effort, right? It's all about speed to power with him. And again, I talked about it. If he came out last year, he was probably going to be a first round pick. I don't even know if he lost much leverage in deciding to come back another year, but I love that he really is honed in on his game. So you think as a pass rusher, he's only going to get better. Yeah, we saw those ranks there over the past two seasons in the ACC sacks, yeah. pressures. He's number one. Give us a comp for him. To me, he's like Khalil Mack. And, and I say this, like, Khalil Mack and him aren't the most twitched up athletic guys, but they beat you with that speed to power. They use their leverage really well in regards to getting up under offensive tackles pads and knocking them back. So he reminds me a lot of Khalil Mack when he came out of um, Buffalo a few years ago, more than a few years ago, because it's been over 10 years. But that's who he reminds me of, Khalil Mack coming out of Buffalo. This is a guy, like I said, Jacqueline, it starts with all speed to power with him, but he's done a really good job honing in on his pass rush ability and working other moves to win on the edge. You see it right there, six foot four, 260 pounds. So he has some weight behind it. You can see why offensive tackles get knocked off balance when he rushes against them. If we really quickly, defensive rookie of the year, if you could fast Ooh. forward, which one would you put your money on? It has to be out of these two guys? Out of these two guys. Or if there's another that you think is over. I think Latu from UCLA, okay. to me, has the best hand usage out of all these guys. He's almost like a jujitsu warrior in the regards to how he uses his hands to beat offensive tackles. And with a good pass rusher, you never want to stop your feet. And when you watch Latu play, I, I had the privilege to watch him in the senior bowl at practice. His feet never stop on contact. He's a guy where coming out of college, most young guys, they struggle after their first move getting off the blocker. This is a guy that will hit you with a second and third move until he gets to the quarterback. I think Latu is a guy that could be a sneaky pick for defensive player of the year. Rookie defensive player of the year. All right, and I believe we have Latu um, on set with our crew in Indy, and hopefully we'll hear from that. And you can see it a little bit later today right here on HQ. Lige Duzable joining us here, talking all things about the Combine. Again, that's going on right now in Indy. We got a crew out there all week. We got you covered. Some more important dates in the offseason. Of course, that franchise tag deadline on March 5th. And the NFL draft, April 25th through the 27th.